Gaming is a huge market these days. More people than ever are playing video games and it's just a far cry from the lonely, sweaty nerd image that it wore so heavily in the 80s and 90s. Shut up, okay, it is. Plenty of lonely, sweaty nerds playing Far Cry, on the other hand. <coughs> is that like a direct dig at me then? Because I <laughs> literally just told him I was playing Far Cry. There's a good chance that your mum plays Candy Crush on a lunch break and every little kid in your family plays video games on a tablet or watches videos about video games on their tablet. And as a result of this ballooning audience, publishers more than ever try to make games with mass appeal. But trying to appeal to everyone is often the best way of appealing to no one at all. Hot off the release of Resident Evil 7 recently, GameSpot reported that Capcom's share prices fell by 3%, despite the game being massively successful and receiving critical acclaim. It shipped a total of two and a half million units to retailers following its launch in January. Resident Evil 7 is the scariest the series has been in years, at least as far as Capcom's investors were concerned, who were so terrified by the low sales that they dumped stock in the company. Despite making a measurably better game than Resident Evil 5 and 6, which both sold over five million copies in the first week, the high launch sales just weren't there. Resident Evil 5 and 6 were straightforward co-op shooters with light, horror elements. They had mass market appeal and this translated into sales. Resident Evil 7, however, is a return to the series roots with more of a focus on survival horror over action. This does make the game a little more niche. So this raises the question, should games be made more for us, the players, or be made more for the shareholders or the focus groups in order to make more profit? Activision pump out Call of Duty titles every year like their goddamn Marvel movies. Why? Because they make shit tons of cash for the company and its shareholders. So naturally, the shareholders tell them to keep making Call of Duty games so they can carry on getting getting more cash, and who can blame them? Cash is lovely. If you happen to like Call of Duty, do cover your ears for this next bit. COD games are mechanically simple. They're full of flashy and explosive imagery and are basically interactive action movies. This appeals to the casual audience, which translates to massive sales figures. It's the same reason that the Transformers movies are so popular. They're just easy entertainment. They appeal to almost everyone and rake in billions at the box office. COD is designed around what 10 year old kids say to Activision in focus groups and what market demand seems to dictate. A few years ago, it was a modern warfare setting, and in recent years, for some reason, they seem to think it's near future sci fi that we want. I like to be sat in one of the focus groups at Activision with yeah. other 10 year olds. Yeah, it's, it's well <laughs> dodgy. It definitely it does happen. You look at the trailers for Infinite Warfare, right? All the DLC trailers and everything is so bright and vibrant. It's, it's like fucking Power Rangers or something. They're aiming at that kind of demographic. You, it's just all over their marketing. You can see it. Okay, what Mike's saying is that if you play Call of Duty, you are, you're, pretty, you're a 10 year old kid. What happened with Resident Evil 7 was quite different. Capcom actually listened to what the core fans wanted and made a game that they would like. But because it didn't have the mass market appeal of the last two installments, it sold worse and the shareholders sold off their stock. Shareholders look at video games as little more than another investment opportunity, another chance to make cash, which as we've already established is great. A Nintendo shareholder infamously said in an interview back in 2014, he was angry that at a shareholder meeting, they talked about nothing but video games. I don't understand video games, the Nintendo shareholder said. He would have preferred to talk about capital gain and dividends. It should be a little surprise that shareholders like this asshat view video games with such contempt. It can be tricky for a developer and a publisher to find the right balance between the two sides. On one hand, they want to make and sell highly rated games their audience will love. On the other, they want their shareholders to keep funding those projects in future, because it is those same out of touch cynical shareholders who don't understand video games who fund some of the biggest video games around. And it really begs the question, who should these companies make their games for? Their fans or their shareholders? We know yeah. what we think. Yeah. They should be making games for us, I think. If they're making games just for profit, does that mean that the quality of the games is lowered? so that in future, their, their franchises kind of die off because yeah. they've got no confidence in their games. Yeah, it's short term kind of what they get back is a lot better, obviously, when they focus test and, and market these games in a particular way and make these games for a particular audience. They make a hell of a lot of money over the space of maybe two years or something. But for the actual long-term health of the industry, it can't be good if so many of us are just getting sick of the you know the same old shit all the time. That's the balance that they need to find. It's, it's all about balance. Like you, you need, yes, you've got to please the shareholders. You need, we need them to keep funding games for us to, to buy and play. You know, we, we need their money, but at the same time, you've got to keep your fans happy. They just need to think about what they're doing a bit more and be more kind of 
engaged yeah. with us and listening to us in a different way rather than asking specific groups like 10 year old boys what kind of people do they want to shoot in the head. We've all seen the likes of Titanfall 2, Dishonored 2, Call of Duty, most recent Call of Duty, Watch Dogs 2, they've all declined in sales mm. recently and they, these are all backed by shareholders. Yeah, yeah. So they're making these games based on decisions that they want to appeal to the most amount of most amount of play people so they can make most amount of money but they're not making as much money as they did in the first instance so what does that tell you like they're watering down these games they're, yeah. they're taking out imagination and creativity and, and making it all really yeah. homogenized and i've said it before um, but it's worth reiterating every ubisoft game is it's, it's just fa they're infamous for it by now all the mechanics are shared across all the games because it worked well in assassin's creed 2 they think it needs to be in every single game that they've made since so their thinking needs to develop a little bit more beyond what's worked before well let's do that exact same thing again for the health of the industry we need to keep creatively unique games around this is where the indie scene and the likes of kickstarter and early access come in they give us great interesting games that are widely popular within the niche but have little to offer for the mass market but AAA games need to stay interesting too we're pretty confident that the call of duty juggernaut will come crashing down eventually recent sales have already hinted at that but whatever happens to call of duty the series will always be seen as a spectacular success and a model for how to make a crap ton of money out of video games resident evil 7 will very likely live for a lot longer in the minds of the gaming community than infinite warfare can ever hope to do and that is ultimately the trade-off that video game companies and their share holders have to decide on. Do they want to make a more memorable game now that might not make as much money but will keep their franchise alive for a bit longer or do they want to make another sequel for another big series and just milk it to death? So what do you guys think? Do you think games are prioritizing profit over fun these days? Let us know down in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. Check out some more of our content around about here on the screen and we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.